Okay, so we are here now with the Bohr's model of the atom. Okay, now let's look at the atomic structure. Basically, this is what scientists know at this moment. Okay, it seems that right in the center of the atom, right in the center of the atom, is where you find the nucleus and in the nucleus as far as we know there are two particles okay the first one is called proton and the second one is called neutron neutron okay so protons are supposed to be positively charged so they carry a relative charge of positive one neutrons have no charge they, they don't carry any charge okay and at the same time protons carry a mass mass of one unit and neutrons carry a mass of one unit one unit now what that unit is it does not matter but it's one unit and then this is called the electron cloud okay this area is called the electron cloud anywhere in this area you can find electrons all right anywhere you might find electron there it could be there it could be here it could be here anything okay electrons are electrons are negatively charged so they carry a relative charge of negative one and their mass okay so electrons okay so their charge is negative one their mass is considered to be zero units that means it's basically has no mass all right it's almost like if you were standing on a weighing scale and and the weighing scales showed uh, 52 kilograms and if a fly came and sat on your shoulder the weight is not going to increase okay so because the weight of the fly is so insignificant compared to your weight so that's what the, the relativeness here is okay so so basically this is what you may know from high school from high school you might know this okay and then in high school you may have also come across electron configurations which were given to you uh, as something like this. Let's say that for example, sodium, it, it has 11 protons. So this could have been given to you as 2.8.1. Okay. So 2.8.1, what does this mean? It means that electrons are, in, in sodium, electrons are at three different levels. Okay. Uh, this is level one this is level two and this is level number three okay so in this topic what we're going to investigate is we're going to investigate what this entire thing is about okay what are these levels about so we start off with the Bohr's model of the atom now for the Bohr's model of the atom uh, basically it all started off with this image here okay um, in the early parts of the 1900s okay when hydrogen was heated up in an electric discharge tube and the light was passed through a diffractor or a prism in this case it the light that was shown on the screen uh, showed just a few streaks of red green blue purple okay these are the colors which were observed and so Bohr um, managed to explain why hydrogen releases all these various colors okay why doesn't it release any other color but only releases this color so this was his explanation because you see if you look at the visible spectrum right visible spectrum runs from about 400 nanometers to about 700 nanometers here and then if you look at this spectrum here you see these colors these colors overlap with these colors right so which means that red is where it's supposed to be and then um green is where it's supposed to be blue is where it's supposed to be everybody is where they're supposed to be but the question is what happened to the rest of the colors so what happened to the rest of the colors? so this is what niels bohr wanted to explain so niels bohr said this is what he said if you look at this picture here this is what he says he says okay so th let's say this is the nucleus of hydrogen okay let's say this is the nucleus of hydrogen here this is the nucleus he says around the atom around the atom there are various energy levels okay so this is energy level number one okay this one here energy level number one then there is energy level number two and then there's energy level number three and energy level number four energy level number five energy level number six and i think there is one more here which will be energy level number seven so there are seven energy levels okay 
So this is what first thing Bohr said. Bohr said there are seven energy levels around the hydrogen atom. Okay, and then he says. He says the hydrogen at electron, the electron in the hi uh, in hydrogen is always at energy level number one. All right, so this hydrogen is always at energy level number one. Okay, so that's where he is, and then when it absorbs energy, this electron can can choose to move up to energy level number two, or it can go up to energy level number three. Or it can go up to four and so on. Okay, it can go up five and six and seven and eight and nine. It can go up to these energy levels. When it goes up to that energy level, all right, the electrons can choose to come back directly to where they came from. That means if they if the electron is from level one, right? That means it just goes off to level two and comes back to level one and then goes from level three back to level one. In all of these cases, these green lines that you're seeing here, the electron is returning back. Okay, it's returning back to um, energy level number one. And when it goes back to energy level number one, it releases energy. Okay, so it releases energy when it goes back. So it releases energy in all these transitions, it releases energy. And energy is then related back to wavelength, all right? Wavelength, light, the color that you see, okay? So if you, just this, this is the color that you see. So this is what you see, the color that you see. So these are all the wavelengths, uh, 122, 103, 97, 95. But the thing is, this wavelength, you can, our eyes cannot see because all of these wavelengths, okay, all of these wavelengths here, these wavelengths here, they all fall in the, in the UV, are they even in the UV region? No, they're not even in the UV region. They are here. They are probably in the, more of the, um, yeah, UV maybe, UV region around that. So they are in that UV region, so you can't really see them, okay? You can't really see them. Then, at the same time, he says, now the electrons which have moved to higher energy levels, right? They have moved to higher energy levels. What, what happens when they return? Instead of returning to level number one, they all return to level number two, okay? Look here. Uh, in all of these cases, they are returning back to level number two. So instead of returning to level number one, they return to level number two. When they return to level number two, they will also release certain amount of energy. So every time they return, they release certain amount of energy. Again, this energy is then converted into wavelengths. These wavelengths that you're seeing here, these wavelengths, these are the wavelengths that are in your uh, visible region that means you can see them okay you can see them these are the colors which we see here uh, these are the colors that we see here all right so starting from the biggest one here uh, red has the lowest amount of energy and the largest wavelength so so if we come back here again sorry if we come back here again right so this one here let me erase the entire thing okay because it's look, beginning to look messy okay so if you look at here right okay so if you look over here 656 656 this would be red okay 486 this would be more of green okay and uh is it green okay. and then next one this would be violet violet or purple okay uh red i think it's not green this is yellow okay and then this is green Let, let's have a look at it again oh there's no yellow sorry so red green blue okay yes sorry okay so red green blue okay so red green okay blue this this is supposed to be blue okay let me erase this again all right okay so red green and this is blue okay so these are the colors that you can see this is our eyes our rod cells and cone cells and eyes can detect this but the electrons that initially went up to higher energy levels, if they return to level number three, they don't return to level number one, two, one, or they don't return to level number two, but they return to level number three. If they return directly to level number three, they will release this amount of energy. And this amount of energy is, is in the infrared region. Infrared region. Our eyes also cannot see this because it's infrared. It's more of heat kind of energy, okay? 
So the moral story here is this. Electrons can move from uh, level number one to level number two, level three, level four, level five, level six, whatever level they want to go to. And then they, the electrons have many options. They either return back straight to level number one, or they return to level number two, or they return to level number three, or they return to level number four. And then when they reach level number four, they can return directly back to level number one, or they re can return to level number two, so on. It's like, it's quite complicated, okay? But whatever it is, Bohr's model says, the important thing about Bohr's model is there are various energy levels around the nucleus. That's a very important statement. There are various energy levels around the nucleus. And for this, no, uh, Bohr was given a Nobel Prize. Okay? Because nobody has ever seen an atom. Nobody has been into an atom. Nobody knows what is in an atom. But for somebody to say there are energy levels in an atom and kind of prove it was a big deal, okay? Then you, there is this part about problems with the Bohr's model. Now, problems with the Bohr mo Bohr's model, there were, there were basically uh, maybe three big problems. With, I mean, I going to say big problems. The first problem was, the first problem was he could not um, explain the emission spectrum for multi-electron system. That means, if, if something had more than one electron, let's say like for example, let's say helium, helium, helium has two electrons. So he, his model could not explain the emission spectrum for helium. That's number one, cannot explain. Number two, if electrons are moving in orbits, okay, has what he said, electrons are moving in orbits, orbits at various energy levels, right? If electrons are moving in orbits, these electrons should at some point fall into the nucleus, okay? But they don't. And he couldn't explain why. Because according to classical physics, when you have a negatively charged particle moving around a positively charged particle, at some point, it will lose energy and it will fall into the nucleus. But it does not, okay? It does not. So why? Bohr couldn't explain. And the third thing is, Bohr said electrons are moving in orbits, okay? They're moving in orbits. Okay, so when we say orbit, right, what we're saying is, Okay, we are, what we're saying is electrons are moving in... Okay, so let's say electron is moving here, right? Okay, so let me change color. Lah. Okay, so let's say electron is moving here. Oops, electron is moving here. So if it's moving, right, in an orbit, it will always be on that orbit. Always, always be on the orbit. So the question is, if it's moving in an orbit, shouldn't we be able to detect exactly where the electron is, okay, where the electron is? but we are unable to do this. So we cannot determine the exact position of an electron. That is a problem. So that is something, again, the model could not explain. It's because Bohr said electrons are moving in orbits, and orbits are fixed distances from a nucleus. So why can't we detect the electron? So the question was, and there was no answer. Okay, so basically what Bohr said was, at the quantum level, at, at the microscopic down in the nucleus level, the laws of physics don't work. Things are so different, um, cannot explain things. That's what he said. Okay, so that was the problem with Bohr's model of the atom. Then Bohr's model of the atom um, was used to build the next model, which is called the quantum mechanical model of the atom. Okay, the quantum mechanical model of the atom. But the quantum mechanical model of the atom takes some uh, inspiration from the Bohr's model, but it tries to explain some things which are not part of the Bohr's model, right? So that is the next thing we will be looking at.